Saturday, 25th of February, 2012. Hoax Art Online, Chapter 0 0.001 from the files. And joining me at the couch, on the couch, in corridor, is artist Kurt Sons. How are you, Kurt? I'm very well, thank you very well. Great to have you here. Now, um, your art extends from photography, to musician, amongst other, and curator as well. I've got to say, your work in photography is particularly of interest, um, particularly in the sense of the historical sense. Uh, it's been described by Tara Callahan from Queensland Centre for Photography as a work that investigates the classic mystery genre of the Australian landscape is often noted as one of the most beautiful and scenic countries in the world. The reality of the harsh and treacherous nature of the Australian landscape is reflected through these images that your photography. Tell us how you came about this sort of style of photography and where your interest began. Uh, with photography, it began um, uh, probably about 15 years ago, I guess. It, it wasn't a natural thing to start with. Um, I saw a show at uh, MCA a while back that had a lot of um, early photography in it. Um, uh, people like uh, Frank Hurley, well, I guess he's not that early, but, um, uh, and going right back into um, the early Wild West days um, in America, the travelling sorts of photographers that used to go through that area. Um, uh, so it, it, I guess the art making comes from more of a specific sort of graphic making sense. Um, more interested in uh, taking photos. So to begin with, I was more interested in taking photos rather than creating artworks. Then I guess the art came into it when I started um, uh, combining the interest of sort of colonial history that I had um, with uh, photographing areas that are of interest through those colonial sort of stories that I've read. Um, so, yeah, I guess I've just made a really it's interesting a, answer to that. Today. It's an interesting differentiation between um, what is documentary as something, uh, what is the agenda to what is defined as perhaps fine art or art photography. Yeah, or, or even but how does one uh, delineate between that these days? It's, it's becoming more difficult to define. Um, as a uh, photographer yourself, is that something that you can define with what is art yeah. from what isn't? Or how do you work that through? I, I'm not sure, really. I, I, it's, a, it's a good question because um, I also, I guess, predominantly a landscape photography as well, if you really want to look at it as, um, as a genre thing. And um, although I don't see myself as a landscape photographer, I guess I, I don't really see myself as a fine art photographer either. I, um, uh, I just like making the pictures with the camera, I guess. I, there is a certain craft within photography. Yeah. And perhaps today in this digital age where a lot of people As a photographic um, photographer with the craft and the state of the craft, do you think that is now considered to be the art? Is the craft? I think so. And I think, um, although having said that, I was talking to a friend yesterday and he does a lot of stuff involved with, with digital manipulation and, and taking images with a digital camera. And as I said to him, it's not that much different to what happened in the early days. I mean, Frank Hurley is quite a famous Australian photographer from the early sort of 20th century. He went to World War One, went to Antarctica with Shackleton and Mawson and all these guys. Um, amazing images, beautiful glass plate, black and white images and film. But he would come back and if the photo wasn't dramatic enough, he would layer negatives together to make it more dramatic or get the point across better. And to me, that's just exactly the same as someone who's a doctor. Yeah, and it's it's exactly the same. It's just that with Photoshop or digital image making, it's 
just that much quicker and, and easier to do. So there's actually, it's coming from exactly the same spot. And over the years, so many people manipulate things. Just in a dark room, you can manipulate so many things. And so I, I guess it's not, it's, it's, it's not that far away. It's just sort of making it more accessible. I guess where it comes into, the craft comes into it in, in that, I, I still like the idea of taking film for the, the surprise of it not really knowing what's going to come back. Even though you think you know what you've got, you never quite know. Um, so it could, could turn all the shit once you've looked at your negatives. Or you could get a surprise as well. Something that often things that I think haven't worked are things that end up being quite, quite good. It's about the planning, I guess. What you see in one's mind's eye and how you see that through the frame yep. and perhaps a little to the frame. Yes. Which seems to be a very important aspect to your focus. Yeah, work. and again, coming back from influences, like I, I was, and also just from the process that I'm used to. Like when I started taking photos, I was using film, and you kind of automatically have to have that idea of a, of a, especially when I'm working quickly, which I do because I'm working in hours of the day where light changes quite dramatically really quickly, so the early morning or the really late afternoon. So, and even at night, it can change quickly. So. It's that having to get the image right straight away and then moving on. Um, so the framing, looking at every part of the frame while you're looking through the viewfinder. So you're knowing what, what's in there. Um, but having said that, I mean, again, digitally, you can scan next now and take stuff out if you really want to. And you never really know. I mean, I, I, I can say that I use the exact frame of my images, which I 99.9% of the time do. But occasionally, there is a time where you just go, look, I have to manipulate something out of it. But it's, again, it's the same as dodging something or going to a dark room and meticulously rubbing it out, which is more crafty, I guess. But, yeah. <laughs> We're on the couch with Kurt Sorensen. He is talking about his work. He is the artist here at the first of the Protart series um, for 25th of February 2012. Um, let's talk a little bit more about the process of your, your work because that seems to be something that um, is very important. You often work at night time, um, you work in colour, but the way even you exhibit is dark, low light, um, yeah. so you create this sort of feeling and ambience within the space within which you exhibit. Yeah. Um, so it seems to be not just the process from the beginning, you have a real Follow through vision of what it is that you want to display or exhibit. Definitely, I, I like I I like the finished product to be an image that I, I should say I, I so I research stories and I'll go to that spot um, and the photos I take are, are the images I see in my head that I think happen like I think it looked like that when this event happened. Whatever it was. So uh, that also takes time as well, going back and forth. And it just so happens that most of the stories that I enjoy are things that happen at night, that happen in the darker hours. And, uh, Is that a reflection on your personality? It could be, I'm not sure. That's <laughs> like people keep saying. <laughs> the dark the side. Dark side. It's yeah. the dark side. <laughs> it's, it's funny, yeah. I, I mean, I quite actually, I legitimately enjoy being out there. Although I don't really consider myself a very morbid kind of person. No, well I wouldn't describe you as a morbid person <laughs> at all. But obviously these characters that you are taking and, and viewing um, are quite significant, perhaps not known to the everyday average mm. person on the uh, King Street um, behind us um, or beyond that. But there are certainly characters that people seem to really kind of pick up on it and have an interest with it and perhaps in a sort of yeah. kind of frontier way relate to it. Is that um, something that you are enjoying giving highlight to? Definitely, and uh, it's just uh, talking to people about not so much the photos but the stories that are surrounding or that they're depicting. It's really interesting how people get really involved in the story. Um, oh, and what happened next? What was that guy doing there? Why was he there? So um, they're not necessarily well-known stories, but they're stories that seem to pique people's interests. Um, 
and you're dealing with stories that were written in you know the, the, the 19th century the events that you know back then they still had the stuff happens as well so their stories written really dramatically and, and entertainingly written um, and they left no detail out uh, they were really meticulous in writing how they describe the event and right down to things like if, if something quite almost supernatural happens during the story that's just recorded as as a fact of <laughs> as a fact of what happens it's historical fact. yeah and, and it's, so it is written so and, it must yeah be. it must have happened and, and it's almost like they don't it's not maybe today there might have been another line underneath it saying someone criticized that oh it's not you know, supernatural so what are the by this but Back in the, those days, it seemed like that line was just written, and that was it. Like, it was just taken as a yeah. That could have, possibly that could have happened. You know? I was um, thinking of the Ben Malley hoax, and obviously, remember you to read a poem of his selection um, soon. Um, but Ben Malley um, was sort of uh, kind of a sense of what we're talking about here, and they kind of gave rise to sense of someone not really known on the country, in the regional area, mm. and it was completely a character of fiction, yeah, right. uh, somebody's grandchild, um, and they they proved everyone wrong, and these characters both became famous yeah, as well. complete quotes. But, you know, back to the, the whole sort of thing of um, historical scenes, um, that is something that, you know, you obviously take a lot of enjoyment is mm. researching. And once again, pulling back to Frontier, this comes through also in the music. Uh, your album, as part of one of your um, musical outfits, Founder, um, has been a decade in the making. Embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> into the uh, frightened ear, which kind of sort of crosses over with this idea of contrast of light and dark and so forth. And, um, also offering up those uh, focus focus motions yep. and little alien beings and so forth. Tell us about your music. The music, well, um, it's 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 a band. Town is a band that's been around for now in various guises, but name wise in various guises for about fifteen years. And um, it just started as uh, the three of us: Joe, Travis, and myself, um, friends. Met at university, traditional kind of pathway to a band, I guess. Um, sort of found we all had similar interests in music. Here's the name founder. Yeah, I actually, I really you don't know where that. Other. I really don't know where that name came from. I don't, I don't know if anyone does. It's just really strange. That so. sounds too. Yeah, <laughs> it could be. I think it, yeah. I'm not sure. It's, it's all a blur. So. 